As we continue on to Section 2 of Chapter 5, we're going to be dealing with... i to get my mic on well. Polynomial functions and adding and subtracting polynomials. And we did a little bit of this in Chapter 1, so a nice review. Defining polynomials, monomials, binomials, trinomials, and degree. Well, we had said an expression, an algebraic expression, are a series of terms. And we said terms were separated by either a plus or a minus sign. So here's the expression. There are two terms. Here's the expression. There are three terms. Here's the expression. Just one term. And here you'll see there's just a constant, but still one term. Now in chapter two, we defined that when we looked at terms, the, as part of the term, there was a numerical coefficient. And the numerical coefficient was sort of the sign and the number part. Well, here there is no number, so we assume there's a 1 there. So the 1 is our term. Uh, 1 is our coefficient of the term x to the fifth. That's better. So our term here is this. Our numerical coefficient is the 3. Here our numerical coefficient is a negative 4. And here there's a 1 that we can stick in there, a negative 1. 3 is a constant, and that is its coefficient as well. Now, polynomial. By definition, a polynomial in X is a finite sum of terms of the form A X to the nth, where A is a real number and N is a whole number. Now from chapter one, the whole numbers were zero, one, two, three, and our ellipsis, indicating it goes on. Do you see any negative numbers here? No. So we simplify this to say that uh, if you see something like this, uh, 2x to the negative 2, or 2 to the, well, over x to the second, these two things are equivalent, we say you cannot have a negative exponent as being a polynomial because it doesn't meet the definition. It has to be a whole number. They can only be positive exponents. Now, you might say, well, here's a positive exponent. But the other thing is we say you can't have variables in the denominator and still call it a true polynomial. OK, this is sort of technical. Uh, they're going to probably ask you at least one question on this. So you'll want to know. OK. Now, as we see this polynomial, we have it in what is called a to the fifth, the third, the second, the first. In a sense, that could be x to the zero power there. This is descending powers of x. And they're mentioning that. Now, this is not a polynomial, officially, because of this negative exponent. A negative 5 is not a whole number. And in section uh, 5, we'll be dealing with these. 
So that's why they're saying this is not considered an official polynomial. Okay, now there are a few polynomials that have, in addition to the word polynomial, have a special name. If it's only one term, it's called a monomial. Two terms, a binomial. Three terms, a trinomial. These are just to help identify it a little bit more. So, here they're saying what we have in examples. Monomials, binomials, trinomials, and more than three terms, no special name, just a polynomial. Now, notice there are no negative exponents up here. All the exponents are whole numbers. Now, each of the terms in a polynomial has what is called a degree. And here's the definition of the degree of a term. And the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents on the variables contained in the term. Now, it's not the numerical coefficients. So, what are the exponents here? Two. So, the degree of this is two. Now, here we have exponents on the numerical coefficient. We don't count those, only on the variables. So, this is five. This one, there's a one by every term. That is a one. Now, in this term, there's a two, a one, and a three. That adds up to six. Now, here there is no variable, but we might think of it as x to the zero, as they mentioned above. So just the constant, we say the degree of a constant is zero. So we have all of this right here as well. OK, we can do our practice, too. It's sort of easy here. So for a here, this is going to be 3. Take a moment. 2. 1. 2. 5 is 7. Now, when we want to, these are degrees of a term. To find the degree of a polynomial expression, which may contain one or more terms, it's the greatest degree of any one of the polynomial terms. So here, what you do is you figure out the degree of each term, this one's 2, this is 1, this is 0. Now, of these three terms, which is the largest? 2. So the degree of this one is 2. Here, this is going to be 1 and 0. The largest of these is 1. This is 1, this is 3, this is 2, this is 0. What's the largest of these? Three. Okay? And they have it right here as well. Now, students often mess up on this. It's really easy so long as you know the rule. So you can just scan it. This one's going to be two. This is going to be one. This one's going to be three.
Now it wants you to complete the table for the polynomial. Well, first, how many terms? One, two, three, four, five. So they have them all listed here. What's the numerical coefficient? A 7, a negative 6, a 1, a negative 3, a 7. And the degree of this term is 3. This one is 2, 2, 1, 0. So the highest degree is 3. And you'll have some practice on this. Now here, they're going to continue with our study of polynomials, and uh, we're looking at function, which will be used quite a bit in future courses. This is our symbol for function, and they say that this is just our function, and then they're going to give you some value of x that we then simplify in this machine from chapter 3 a little bit. So we had said a good way to do that is make a little t-chart where this we said could be a y. Now the values for x they want to give us here is a 1 and a negative 2. And we just substitute then first a 1 here so 1 squared is 1, so this is 3, minus 2 times 1 is 2, minus 5. So there's a negative 7 and a positive 3 will give you a negative 4. Now for the next one, they're going to give us a 3. We're going to put in there a negative 2 that we're going to square. And the use of the parentheses is a very good tool. Now, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4 minus 5. So this gives me a 16 minus 5 will be an 11. A good way to organize your data, but uh, you may not need it. And there we go. So in the first case, we got a negative 4. Here we're getting an 11. All right, we're going to do a similar thing using this function here. And uh, we're looking for time, six seconds. And again, you're just going to put the value of one, and then later six. And here you get this time, working it through, and this time. Okay. Now, when we simplify polynomials, basically we do so by combining like terms. And we had this earlier also. These are like terms whose variables contain exactly the same letter and exponent. We said the only modification we might do for this is xy and yx. Even though the letter order is different, they're still like terms. So these are like terms. These are unlike terms. We did that in chapter 1. So let's do some of it. We want to combine like terms. So going over strategy, we only deal with the numerical coefficients. This will be a 4x. Now, these are not like terms, so we can't do anything with that. Keeping in mind there's a 1 there, 
this becomes 10 x to the third. Now these two are like terms, so that will be 13 x squared. A positive 5 and a negative 7 gives you a negative 2. And they have that. Now for letter E, that's a little tricky, so let me set that up for you here. Uh, this is a like term, and this is a like term. So we have uh, two-fifths that I'm going to make four-tenths, x to the fourth, plus one-tenth, x to the fourth. So these are like together. Then we have thirds here, which will be, and I see I need a sixth, so I'm going to make this four-sixths, x to the third, minus 1, 6, x to the third. And then I just have one of these, minus x squared. So I just add my numerators now, that my denominators are the same. This is 5 tenths, which is 1 half, x to the fourth. 1 fourth minus, I mean, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 6 is also one-half x to the third minus x squared, and that's what they got. And they're showing you basically this technique. Okay, a little review of chapter one stuff here. Uh, we may have missed something. Let's see if we got it on the bottom here. Yes. Here they want us to Combine more like terms. And again, we're just dealing with the numerical coefficients. So here we have a negative 9 and a negative 5. That'll give us a negative 14. Oh, excuse me, no. Those aren't like terms. <laughs> this is an x squared and a y squared. I was looking at that too quickly. All right, so the only like terms we have are these middle ones. So that's going to be a positive 3 and a positive 7 gives you a positive 10. Again, I'm trying to go a little too fast here. and I don't want to make it too long. Okay, so here they're saying write a polynomial that describes the total area of square and rectangle shown, and then simplify. Okay, that's what we missed. So here's uh, pictures. This is going to be x squared. This is going to be 3x, 9, plus 4x, plus 2x squared. Okay, and then you just group like terms. Okay. Now you're doing the multiplication, that gives you the x squared, but then once you do the multiplication, you're just combining through adding the numerical coefficients. The variables don't change anymore. Okay, now we're doing some adding and subtracting a string of polynomials. And there's quite a few here to look at, so let me go over what I think is a very useful technique. If I see something like this, what I would do, instead of trying to do it horizontally, I would set it up vertically. I would go 7x squared y, and then I see, uh, uh, let's make that x cubed, there you go. I'd take this next cube one, put it underneath, so I'd get 6x cubed y. So it's just, instead of doing it horizontally, I'm doing it vertically. Then I have a negative xy cubed, and I don't have anything else for that one. And then here I have a positive 11, 
and I have a negative 4. So what I've done is vertically set these up in their like term columns. So now this becomes 13 x cubed y minus xy cubed, and then I get a plus 7. Now, if you want to do it horizontally, that's how they're showing you in the textbook. That is a good way to do it also. And this one was not too difficult, but I like the style of doing it. You want to get the correct answer. And this one is done exactly the same way. Put them in like term columns and do it carefully. Watch the sign. Okay, we're going to get some that are a little more difficult as we go on. And you will be doing the practice. So once again, when you have something like this, these are all with pluses between them. You can just take away the parentheses. If you have the word and between them, just take away the parentheses, put them in like term columns. Now, when we do subtraction, this is where it gets a little bit more challenging. Because we have to do something first. And they've described it above, and we've said this before. When you have a parenthesis, and there's a negative sign in front of the parenthesis, to remove the parentheses, all you have to do is change each term from its original sign to its opposite sign. And then it just becomes a plus. So the negative out here becomes a plus. And then internally, you change each sign. That's what they're showing you. And now it's just like the previous one. Combine like terms. These are like terms. And if you color code them a little bit that I've done often, this is a like term. And no, there's no like term for these. Again, putting them in uh, like term columns, vertical like term columns, is the way to go. But the key is first make this plus and then internally change all these signs. Then like term columns. So here there's two parentheses. Just take it all out of the parentheses. Make this a positive. Make this one a negative. Make this a positive and combine like terms. Now, these shouldn't be difficult. The only problem you might have with them is messing up on the signs. And I've seen when I've checked tests, uh, out processing a student from a test they just took, that they didn't follow the signs correctly. And that's, of course, what they're asking you to do. Now, in example 12, that's something a little different. So let's look at example 12. Because this ties up with words here. Here they're saying subtract from the sum. So these two we're going to add together. Then these, by the word subtract, think of it as a negative out in front. This will become a negative 5. This will become a positive 6. So you can write this this way. 8z plus 11. That would be this one. Then 9z minus 2. And then these now are going to become a negative 5z because it says subtract this. Let me take away the change of signs that I put there. So this is going to be a negative. 
this is going to be a positive now. And now you don't have to worry about anything else. Just correctly do this. So this is going to be 17 minus 5, 12z. This is going to be 19 minus 2, negative 17. And let's see. Uh, how about 18 minus 2? All right, I'm trying to do this mentally here. Apologize for that. Uh, 18 minus 2, that makes it a 16, yes. And double check your work. Because by going quickly, you know, just take your time. All right. Now, for this one, again, they have a variety of things to do. Just put them in like term columns. You don't have to change any signs here because that's positive. But here, because of the negative, you're going to change each of these signs and put them in vertical like term columns. I think that's a very useful technique. But again, if you want to do it horizontally, that's fine. And here they are suggesting. I suggested that to you earlier. Now, notice something like this. And I've seen where students make an error here as well. You see this negative out here. Well, when you are subtracting this, by removing the parentheses, you have to change each of these signs. So that will become a negative, this will become a positive, and this will become a negative when you remove the parentheses. So that's what they have here. So again, it really facilitates doing it and hopefully double checking your work because you can make little errors as I can. Okay, and here they're saying uh, polynomial functions can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. So here's your basic polynomial function. Then if you put a 2 out there in front, as they indicate here, it just indicates you multiply each of these items by 2, as they're showing. Okay, and if you have this, and then they're saying this plus this, what they're saying is to add these two. And that's all they're doing, using function notation to have you, in this case, multiply in some cases, and then here to add polynomial functions together. Now you might say there's no 2 there. That's why this is just regular and this is just regular. Okay. Now this is also uh, in business. They use this notation. Profit function is equal to revenue, the amount of money you take in, minus the cost. Okay? So they're giving you some of this. You put it in your machine, in a sense, work these out, and you come out then with an answer, simplified. And you'll have a chance to do some of these in your work. All right, we're not going to be using our calculator for this, so we'll pass that up, and this will wrap up Section 2.